So this question comes from Diane. Um, I have been hacked. Social engineering. How I know I have been hacked is because I watched your intro to hacking and you told me. Um, what I had already thought. I got a phone call telling me they were Microsoft and that they would help me. They told me to go to areas of my computer and led me to my IP address, I believe. This was how they got my trust and this uh, that this was Microsoft calling me to rescue. After I uh, let them in, they then charged me for helping me. Yes, I'm dumb. Um, I gave them a credit card number. I have all new cards now. They were Smart Snake and just left free Microsoft antivirus on my computer and a phone number I could call if I had a problem. I could use the number to call them for help. Well, that's gone. Okay, so I've been hacked. Uh, what can I do to take my computer back? Do you have a video that shows me uh, what I need to know to protect my computer? I did have SpyBot. I do have CC Clean from Puriform. I use your videos uh, to help myself. I also have malware bytes anti-malware. I don't like this. The free version does not cover a lot. It's really a pain. It keeps popping up and I have to try set this and it will not let me unless I buy the full version. It interferes with games and causes freezing. Um, I just use my computer to play on Facebook and pay my bills online. I like to research information and use the office word too. Uh, I like your videos. Uh, you're very good explaining what you do and go from there. Can you please help me or make a video for dummies like me. Um, yes. So if you get a phone call from Microsoft, hang up. <laughs> Microsoft does not care about you. Here's the, one, here is, here is the one time it is actually a good thing to know that Microsoft really doesn't care about you. If you get a call from Microsoft, hang up. Um, very important though, honestly, with any any of you folks out there, if you get calls from any of these major companies, you know, Microsoft, Google, who the hell knows what, if you get any incoming call, uh, basically don't trust it. Um, I don't care who it's from, AT&T, uh, Verizon, any company that calls inbound to you and then starts asking questions or start do, starts doing anything, do, don't, don't accept it. Don't just just give them the middle finger, hang up the phone, and walk away. It is a scam. It is a scam. If you're really worried about it, if you're really worried about it, here's the thing. Don't ask them for their number and then call their number. If you're really worried about it, what you should do is hang up. Then go to Yellow Pages or go to Google, find out what the, the, the phone number for the company is supposed to be, and then try to recall in that way and see what it's about. But I can tell you, being a consultant for years and years and years, being a computer guy for years and years and years, Microsoft has never called me, Google has never called me, um, AT&T only ever called me, and that was because there was some weird credit card problem. Uh, but these companies just don't call you. So if they call you, just, just hang the hell up. Don't give them credit card numbers. Don't give them anything else. Just hang the hell up. So, okay, this person's been hacked. Uh, obviously, it was bad, especially um, if they were able to install things on her computer. That means they had remote access to their computer. And if they were able to install things with remote access, that also means they had administrator permissions, which means who the hell knows what they installed silently. Uh, so whenever you're installing, anything onto computers, uh, you can either install them in what is called verbose mode, essentially, and verbose mode means you actually see the installation process, or you can do it in quiet mode. And basically with what quiet mode is, is you can add a number of arguments to the executable file for installation, and then it will simply use those arguments and do it seamlessly in the background. You don't even see it happen. So for normal administrators, we normally use this, like if we're going to install an Adobe Acrobat or Adobe Reader or whatever, uh, update, we don't necessarily want our users messing around with the install. So what we'll do is when the computer boots up uh, within an enterprise environment, it will, it will grab the command in order to install that update silently. It will update in the background and the user doesn't even see that it happens, right? Uh, so that's a problem. If you gave them remote access with administrator uh, permission to your computer, we have literally no effing idea what the hell they did to the computer. So, um, uh, you know that pretty beautiful new computer you've been looking at buying? That's probably what I would do. Um, ha ha. No, that's probably what I would do, especially if you're at this level. Uh, can you clean up the computer? Uh, yeah. Or can the computer be cleaned up? Uh, yes. Do I trust you to do it? No. Um, so, yeah, grab your credit card and go to Best Buy.
I'm going to buy a new computer. Can I suggest a Mac? I really like Macs. Because here's the problem. Now, I know a lot of geeks are out there screaming. and They're like, Eli, you're being an a-hole. Why are you telling this woman to buy a new computer? Because here's the problem. What really needs to happen, right? Really what needs to happen at this point is there is no simple process for cleaning up your computer. There just isn't. We don't know what the hell was put into it. We don't know what registry hacks are there. We don't know what startup routines are there. We don't know what they hid on your system that could be doing who the hell knows what. We simply don't. There's not enough time. There's not enough money to worry about it. So essentially, if you really want to clean your computer, what you, what you need to do is you need to pull your hard drive out of your computer. You need to connect it into a different computer. Um, preferably with Linux or something, and basically do a full format, do a wipe of the drive so that every single bit and byte is reset on that damn drive and there is nothing that is residual on that hard drive. You then need to take that hard drive, you need to plug it back into the original computer, and you need to reinstall the Windows operating system with all of your other software, reconfigure it, and go from there. That is the way to secure your system. Now, a lot of people are like, no, Eli, that's stupid, because what you can do is... Now, some people are going to say, well, what you can do is simply do like a factory restore um, or such on your computer. So a factory restore is you go to the start menu, you go to whatever brand, whatever manufacturer your computer has, there'll be some little folder, you click on that, there should be some like little restore link. Um, you click on that, then it'll say, do you want to restore your computer back to factory defaults? You say yes. Voila. The issue is, is when it restores back to factory defaults, it doesn't delete all the files. It doesn't get rid of everything. It gets rid of 99% of the stuff. But what you have to realize is if you're dealing with hackers that are smart enough to do what they did to you, uh, that 1% of crap that's still left on your computer uh, may very well uh, be viruses and malware that will then end up reinfecting your computer. So we see this a lot with, uh, with normal users. They go through... They go through 99% of the things that they need to do. They forget about that 1%, and then that reinfects their computer, and they're back to square one. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's really it. For you, again, I, I know I'm going to have a lot of people screaming at me, but um, probably buy a new computer or hire hire somebody to, again, but they need to format, they need to format that entire damn drive, uh, and then they need to restore it after it's been formatted. If you do not format that drive and restore it, I want to touch that computer. I would not touch that computer with a damn 10-foot pole. I really, 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 really wouldn't. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's my thoughts. Probably not what you want to hear, um, but that's my thought. The other thing you can think about doing um, I guess you could think about is if you only use your computer for Facebook um, and basic research, this may be the time to think about migrating to Linux. Linux. Uh, lots of people like Linux. Whether or not it's technically more secure than Windows is a whole argument unto itself. We're not going to go into here. Uh, but generally, within the real world situation, it ends up being more secure than Windows. Um, so you may look at that. So go to a buddy's computer. Um, Ubuntu is a good version of Linux. You can do Ubuntu. You can use Mint. A lot of people like Mint. I don't know. Ask a buddy. Download the ISO. Basically use that. Install that as the operating system on your computer. That would also fix your problem. So those are your options. Buy a new computer, frank, frankly, probably your solution. Uh, completely format the hard drive and then reinstall everything. It works. I just don't think you can do it. Um, or, again, install Linux. Basically, when you install Linux, it will wipe out everything on your computer. Um, and it will be Linux, so it will be more secure and go from there. Those are my thoughts. And for everybody else out there, remember, if Microsoft or Google or any of these companies call, hang up. Hang up and swear at them.